Hello, my name is Matthew Marquette and welcome to the third and final video uh, of tiling textures. This particular video, I'm going to talk about how you do the selection method. Uh, the last two were the clone and the alpha, and they have their various usages. And selection, of course, uh, also has its uses, and I'll show you why in a moment. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to file open here. So I'm going to open up the image I want to use for this, which is these rocks. I'm going to open here, and I'm going to make a new document also, which is the document size that I want, which is 1024 by 1024. Once again, it remembers one of my last settings, and that is my nice power of two texture size set to pixels, 72 DPI, and so on. So we'll hit Create, and I'm going to take this image, I'm going to drag it off, and we're going to grab the Move tool here and move it into that layer. Now, you might notice that these rocks look a lot larger in here. That's because this is just absolutely massive of a picture. So as I mentioned before in the first video, you do want to make sure that your images are larger than the texture you want. This one clearly is the case. Now I'm going to hit Control T. I zoomed out a little bit and you can see just how much bigger this is. I'm going to hold down Shift, keep my proportions, and shrink down this image so it's a lot closer to the size. It's close enough. Just hit enter. And like I said, it's a lot closer to the size of the window um, so the rocks are a little bit smaller. And what I'm going to do is grab the crop tool, double click in there, Make sure that it's okay. We're going to hit Control T again, and you'll see, right, that it fits our window, so we are good. Now, what I'm going to do is going to copy this layer here, and uh, I'm going to take the bottom layer, and I'm going to offset that. So, filter offset. It remembers from my last time I've done it, so I don't have to do it again. But 512 by 512 is what I offset it as because of my image being 1024. And you'll see now I have the image that is not, tile, or not to offset and the image that is offset below it. Now, this is pretty much exactly the same that we've seen in the other two methods, but what changes here, right, is the selection section, right, hence the name of the method. Now, what I want to talk about first, though, just quickly, is to help you guys understand why we want to use selection over, say, you know, using the clone or whatever. If I come over here and say, you know, use the spot healing of the clone, as I was talking about before, I can define an area, right, by holding down Alt, clicking, and then painting over. But you see what ends up happening here is we get these kind of rocks that are kind of blending into each other and looking kind of ghostly. I mean, and I guess you can shrink your brush and try to be super precise, but I mean, honestly, it doesn't make any sense. It's going to take a long time. Uh, of course, same thing with the spot healing. If I go and I try to spot heal this, you know, you'll get some sort of weird bleedy rock nonsense going on there too. It just doesn't look that great. Now, the same thing would happen with the alpha. We'd do the same thing. We'd have to paint each one of those rocks kind of individually, just like we were going to paint them using a clone. So that also really doesn't work for this situation. So we're going to make selections out of this. So I'm going to go back and make sure I'm selecting the right layer. Because if you select the wrong layer and you start making selections, it'll select whatever layer is selected. So if you're wondering why, what the heck is going on, why is the selection not look right, make sure you're on the right layer. So I'm on the top layer, the one where the rocks look normal. And I'm going to use the quick select tool over here which is our best friend when it comes to doing this method. And we're going to go in and we're actually just going to start painting uh, some rocks here. And you'll see that Photoshop's pretty dang smart about figuring out, you know, which rocks and which things you want. Uh, of course, you can zoom in here. And if you hold down Alt, you can actually take away uh, from the selection. So you just get close. You want to make sure you get entire rocks, not parts of them. So we can come in here and get that whole rock there and just get close. I mean, if you're missing a little bit like this one, it might make sense because rocks kind of have a uh, generic form to them. They don't have a very specific form. But we can come in there and kind of paint out. It's close enough, right? We don't need these areas. Just make sure, though, that everything you've selected looks like a complete rock. Now, I can copy this selection and paste it in. And I'm going to do that just momentarily just to show you. But I'll copy and I'll paste this selection and I'll hide these other two layers here. But you see the problem, even with the quick, quick select, it kind of creates these jaggy kind of rough edges that don't look very natural. So what we want to do is we want to fix those edges. So I'm going to go back a couple of steps here. We're going to turn this back on before I had uh, pretty much anything in there. And I went a little too far back. We'll take that back out again. Okay, and so what I'm going to do now is instead of just copying and pasting that selection, I'm going to go up to the top where it says select and mask. Now, it used to be called the refine edge tool, but they've changed it. Now, you come up here and you hit select and mask, and you'll actually see that we'll have the, uh, instead of the old way of doing it, Photoshop's new ways, it just automatically goes in and you'll see how everything changes based on that. Now, we're getting this weird look over here. That's because we got to play around with settings. It automatically, we see right here, our transparency set to 20. If I go all the way 100%, that makes more sense because I can see my complete selection with any layers underneath it but to be totally honest with you the best bet is to come over here where it says views 
And honestly, I only find two of them uh, that make sense. One is on black and one's on white. And the reason why I find them to make the most sense is when I click on them and you set it to on black and then make sure your black is set to 100%. Now you can actually see the selection a lot better, right? And it really depends. If the, if the image is really bright inherently, then if you set it to on black, you can kind of see where the edges are. If it's really uh, dark inherently, if you set it to on white, it'll look a little bit better and you can kind of see your seams or your edges. So in this case, it's kind of in the middle. There's some areas that are dark, some areas that are light, but this works pretty good. So like I said, on black and on white, your best friends. You can try these other ones, see if they help you out, um, but it's up to you. Like I said, I only find the, those two the most helpful. Um, now, uh, if you can go in here, you can see also that it has uh, some other settings to clean up your edges, uh, one of which is smooth, which is my favorite one. You just basically just start increasing it, and you'll see that it does a pretty good job of cleaning up all those little jaggies. Now, there's other ways of cleaning things up, too. Uh, sometimes I actually find myself adding feather. Uh, to it, which kind of softens the edges, but then coming back with contrast, you actually see a difference here, right? You see how crisp those edges are to where if I actually drop both the feather and this, we don't get that same crisp edge, right, as I'm doing with the smooth. So like I said, a little bit of feather, which blurs the edges, and a little bit of contrast, which sharpens them again. It gets this really nice, clean edge. Now the shift edge, we don't need it for this particular one, but in some cases, if you're starting to get a little halo of a color, like maybe the outside edge is white or the outside edge is black, you don't like that, you can shift the edge in and it'll actually grab pixels. You can see right there, like it'll grab some pixels on the outside and shrink it in. Now, not, I'm really not having an issue with that. Uh, the default set to zero where it's not doing either or, but you can even increase it if you want, if you want to add pixels. In this case, that will actually look bad, but you can see what happens when you shift it out. Right, but those are some great tools for you. Uh, you can try around playing around with these settings. There's no one size fits all, so you always want to play with the settings. There are some other tools with edge detection and some other things we can kind of paint edges, uh, but we're not going to get into that because for this purpose, uh, it's pretty simple and uh, it works for what we need. So I'm just going to hit OK. And you can actually hit Remember Settings, I guess, if you really like the settings from previously. So maybe I'll try that and we'll do that again from later. And then I'll hit OK. And now I've got a better selection. Now it might not look any different than it did before, but this is that new selection. So now I'm going to hit Control C. And once again, remember, I want to make sure I'm in the right layer. I don't want to copy this layer, right, and paste that. That'll look silly, so it'll be on the right layer. Control C, Control V. Now all I have to do is hide this. And you'll see that the selection can now be moved to cover a seam. Now, you don't want to be silly and move it off right into, into nothing because now you're putting pixels out here, and this won't line up on the other side. So just get as close as you can without going over the edge. You can always use the arrow keys to get things lined up perfectly. Now, the problem, though, is this looks a little floaty. right? It doesn't really quite look like it's in the scene. That's because it needs shadows. So that's really simple to add in Photoshop. So we're going to add some shadows to our selections to make them really pop. So just double click in the blank area of the layer and you can see over here that we now get our dialogue layer style box and I can come down and I can choose drop shadow all the way on the bottom. Now the default's a little small so we're going to increase the size and all that stuff. So we can increase the distance a little bit off of the rocks. We increase the size or decrease the size. It depends, whatever. Like I'm just going to play with these numbers. I don't have anything particularly memorized. Uh, and then maybe we'll make them a little bit darker by increasing the opacity here. So just pop in a little bit. Well, maybe just a little bit darker and then increase the size a little bit. And I think we get that nice diffused look. Now, if you want to see the difference, you shut it on and off. You kind of see how they look like they're more there versus this where they're really floaty. So you just get the, the kind of the, fa the direction you want it to go. And you just keep that going for all the rest of them. You can change the direction of the sunlight, but up and down seems to work perfectly for this scene anyway. So I'm just going to hit OK. And that looks pretty good. Now, theoretically, I can just with the move tool select and just hold down all and just keep making copies and cover all of this stuff but of course you're going to see the same rock 30 times and that's going to look silly so you really don't want to do that right you can use the same set of rocks so maybe i'll keep one version of the layer and then i'll hit Control t maybe i'll scale it down just a little bit rotate it a little bit whatever and put it somewhere else or maybe just completely rotate it like this and use this somewhere else right and cover up some seams up here but you do want to be careful about how much you rotate this might not actually work because now our shadows uh, are going to be facing a weird direction. And I don't mean the shadows from the effects. Those are always going to face the same direction unless you flatten them down. Um, but I mean the shadows in the initial image. So this actually won't work. So I'll maybe rotate just slightly, not a lot. And then we can use it, you know, kind of down here or something like that, right? We'll just kind of get it where we can get the most real estate uh, or whatever. But you see the point. So anyways, what I can do then is now I can grab this layer again, bring it up to the top. 
right? And then we can make a new selection. So now we can find a different set of rocks that we want to copy. So we can go through the same method, so on and so forth. I'm just going to do this real quick, right? And just kind of repeat all of those steps that we did before. And remember, you can always zoom in, get your brush smaller. Sorry about all that noise. I don't know why Photoshop does that when I hit the bracket keys when I'm zoomed in. But there you go. So now we have these new set of rocks. I can now do the same thing. Select this. And it remembers the last setting. So I don't even have to play with anything. And then just hit OK. Copy those. And then paste that. Hi, you know, move this back up to the top in case we need to make some more selections and so on. Now, uh, instead of like redoing the uh, the shadows, right? We can even copy layer effects down here by right clicking and copy layer style. Click on the layer that you want to put the style on and hit paste, and that will also paste the exact same shadows, and we can save ourselves some time. Right, so now I can use these rocks to make it and so on. Now, for argument's sake, or time's sake, I should say, for this video, I'm just going to do that repeating thing where I take these rocks and repeat them just so you get an idea and rotate them, even though this is not necessarily how you want to do it. You take the time to make better selections, make it work a little bit better, um, but whatever. We'll just do this real quickly, uh, and then let me just maybe grab the initial rocks down here again and then cover up this seam, um, and then so on. And... Uh, I think lastly, let me find this one layer right here, this one. And I'm actually going to rotate it a little bit, like so, so that I can actually line it up with the bottom seam down there. And that looks pretty good. Now, just like with the alpha method, if you happen to... Uh, um, if you if you happen to just copy like select everything you want to see if your your, uh, your image is tiling and you try to copy it it's not going to copy anything but that one layer unless you do a copy merge so what we're going to do is we're going to hit control a to select everything control shift c to copy merge and control v to paste in make sure that layer is all the way on the top right and by the way you can always put these other uh, images in a group we can not that this one right here make a group out of them or a folder and dump all that stuff in so it's a little bit easier to move things up and down and so on um, if you if you're gonna actually have 50 selections um, but now this is a direct copy of everything so you can see that and if I offset this so I go up to filter offset and take a look I can now test to see if that works right and that looks good right from the original and then I uh, can't see any seams so I could always once again I showed you guys this in the Latin in the first video I should say but if you go to 3d new tiled painting from layer and don't do the 3d space you can actually see what it looks like when it repeats over and over again to see if you're seeing the same rock too many times if you are go back change the colors fix it or whatever but this is gives you kind of an idea how that works now remember control alt Z to get back out uh, of that um, but there you go that is actually the last method the selection method and those are the three different methods of tiling textures this should help you guys out uh, when it comes to uh, to making tiling textures so anyways hope you enjoyed this learned something and i'll see you guys in the next one